This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing fine. Today we are starting with removable partial dentures. Removable partial dentures. So what do you understand by removable partial dentures or RPD? So removable, it means that the denture can be removed by the patient. Partial means we are trying to replace certain amount of teeth. Here in this case, if we look at the diagram here, we can see that few of the teeth are being replaced. So by giving RPD, we have to restore the form and function means the chewing ability, the speaking ability and also we are giving aesthetics to the patient. Okay, because these two things are very important. Form, function, aesthetics. Okay, but in addition, we are also concerned about few more things while giving RPDs. And that is, we have to preserve the remaining structures. For example, here, if you look at this case, we have to give RPD such a way that it preserves the remaining structure. It should not harm them. Okay. So we have to preserve remaining structures and we also have to promote oral health. Promote oral health. So now that we know our objectives in giving RPDs, let us move on to the definition of RPD, which was by GPT-8. GPT-8, which, <laughs> which is glossary of prosthodontic terms. So according to GPT-8, removable partial denture is defined as any prosthesis that replaces some teeth in a partially dentate arch. It can be removed from the mouth, as already told, and replaced at will. Okay? Now let's move on to the types of RPD. We have acrylic partial dentures and we have cast partial dentures. Now the acrylic partial dentures, these are also called as flippers and they are also called as flippers, also called as gum strippers, gum strippers. Why gum strippers? Because they are entirely tissue supported and they cause gingival recession. Because they cause gingival recession, they are called as gum strippers. That is why acrylic partial dentures are best given as a temporary denture. The second type is the cast partial denture. Cast partial denture because they are formed by casting procedure. Casting procedure. They are made by lost wax technique, which we are going to study as we proceed deeper into the RPDs. And these are also of two types. So the cast partial, these are also of two types. We have the clasp retained. And we have the attachment retained. Attachment retained. Okay. So clasp retained can be seen here. Here you can see we have a clasp and that is helping in the retention of this denture. So that is a clasp retained cast partial denture. This one and here this is attachment retained cast partial denture. Now based on the type of retention. RPD can be intracoronal or extracoronal. Intracoronal or extracoronal. Now, in intracoronal, as the name says, 
let us suppose if this is our abutment teeth okay so here the retentive component will be placed within the abutment teeth and extra coronal means the component will be outside the teeth it won't be within the confines of the teeth so that is depending on the type of retention now let us move on to the indications of rpd now the problem with rpd is that it has to be removed by the patient frequently for cleaning isn't it also the patient are reluctant to use the removable ones because obviously there are chances that it may fall off by itself while you know shouting or laughing etc so the patient acceptance here is also lower anyway the indications of rpd first one is the age so let me try to explain this way from 1 to 17 years of age and here we have the mid range and here we have the old patient not only old patient these patients have health problems okay so we are dividing it into three we are dividing the human lifespan into three spans three subdivisions so what happens in between 1 to 17 or say you know age before 17 the pulp chambers are really large so in that cases we cannot give fixed partial denture because in fixed partial denture we have to prepare the teeth we have to cut the teeth to prepare right so when you cut the teeth the pulp is very near let, let me just try to show you let us suppose this is the teeth okay and this is the pulp so if the patient is 17 or below the pulp chamber is really wide bigger so now if we try to give fixed partial dentures in this case what we'll have to do we'll have to cut the teeth okay to give the proper shape right we have to do crown cutting okay so in that case there are chances that the pulp might expose the crown height can be less so the retention might decrease we cannot give fpd in this case right so what we are left with we are left with rpd so in this age range we can give rpd indicated now this mid range obviously indicated but in this section we have the old patient and they have health problems let me just write problems here and these patients have health problems so such old patients which have health problems they will not generally go for fpd because first of all it is expensive and again it requires a lot of you know work you have to preparation and so many things to do so in this case also the fpd is not indicated so here also we have to go with the rpd talking about the sex of the patient so we all know that women have more concerns about their appearance they have more aesthetic inclination so they will want to retain most of the teeth even if they have you know some of the teeth which are not even periodontally very robust still they will insist that i want to retain my remaining teeth so in that case is what you can do you have to stick to the partial dentures only okay but if you compare this to a man of similar age they will say sare daat nikal do pura denture bana do take out all my teeth and make a full denture now we have the occupation and economic status which is related right occupation and economic so obviously if the patient is poor if the patient is poor he or she will go with rpd because it is less expensive also not only poor if the patient has poor oral hygiene also then also you'll give rpd so if the patient is poor give rpd even if the patient has poor oral hygiene hygiene then also rpd okay then occupation if let's say a person is in boxing wrestling so in that cases if you give a fixed prosthesis there are chances that you know while giving a tight punch the prosthesis might be swallowed or inhaled in that case removable one will be a good option because the person can take it out and then play the game then we have the distal extension situation distal extension what is distal extension by the way
so if we have a arch okay and and let us suppose the entire teeth posterior teeth towards the back are missing that is called the distal extension case so in this case we don't have a tooth to support the most posterior part right so there is no support posteriorly so here implant will be a choice but then implant is expensive so what to do now so there we will go for rpd then let's talk about the edentulous span how many teeth are actually missing together how many teeth are missing in you know uniformity now when we are thinking about fpd that is the fixed one having a good periodontal support is must okay and this periodontal support we had learned in one of our videos ante's law or ante's law ante's law so this support was checked by a law in fpd by ante's law and that was the combined perisemental area of the abutment teeth should be equal to or greater than the perisemental area of the tooth or teeth to be replaced let us see here we have a teeth here such a horrible teeth and we have a teeth here so these are the natural teeth and they will act as a abutment okay and we have a missing edentulous span here okay now now according to the ante's law the combined perisemental area of the abutment teeth it should be greater or equal to the perisemental area of the teeth we have to replace so let us suppose here just one teeth was missing so let us suppose here just one teeth was missing so here obviously these teeth can support this right because it is just one now let us suppose we have two teeth missing here then also it can support because two here and two here they can obviously support because perisemental area here is at least equal to the missing ones but let us suppose we have three teeth missing here three what is this <laughs> okay so if three teeth are missing then this cannot support this is not an ideal situation so in that cases you cannot give fpd obviously what we are left with is rpd so when we were talking about the edentulous span we have to check that this thing if fpd is suitable if fpd is not appropriate then we have to go for rpd also here if the ridge is resorbed then fpd cannot be given because you know when you don't have the tissues then obviously you cannot replace the missing tissue in fpd that can be done with rpd because we have the acrylic portion in the rpd that can mimic the soft tissues so if we don't have proper ridge then you have to give either very long teeth so that you know the ridge resorption can be concealed but that is not an ideal thing that won't look good aesthetically so in that cases we go for rpd also the periodontal support of these teeth are very important okay they need to be periodontally sound and strong because if they are not then we cannot give fpd we have to go for rpd now if we are having a case where we have done fresh extraction and we want to replace that you know extraction space with something so in that cases the aesthetic needs have to be fulfilled by the rpd also rpd will act as a splint and it will facilitate healing so in cases where we want to replace the teeth immediately following extraction we have to give rpd when we have congenital defects congenital defects like cleft palate it can be closed by the removable processes because we have a plate here right acrylic plate can pack that area pack that opening then we have the alteration of the vertical dimension so in cases when the vertical dimension of the patient is altered it's better to go with rpd because this alteration have to be done in 2 3 increments so rpd can give the time necessary for this procedure in between this procedure the time which is required it can be taken care of with the rpd 
now we have done with the indications let's i think we should revise the first one was the age okay we divided the lifespan into three sections and we saw that in what cases rpd are indicated then we saw the sex and we saw the female thing that they are more concerned about the retention of the natural teeth so they are more likely to go with the rpd then occupation the poor will go for rpd or if the patient has poor oral hygiene then also rpd then in distal extension situations rpd edentulous span we saw the ante's law and how when fpd cannot be given we give rpd there in fresh extraction cases and congenital defects and alteration of vertical dimension now let us move on to the contraindications well it's not about contraindications here it's about preferences because rpd can be given for almost all the clinical situation except few like it should be avoided in patients who can't keep oral hygiene okay you have to take out the denture every day at night and clean so that is one case and then the patient who lack dexterity to insert and remove the prosthesis then also you have to avoid it and also in epileptic patients where there is danger of swallowing the denture so contraindications is first of all when the patient can't keep oral hygiene or the patient does not have the dexterity to insert and remove the prosthesis and also the patients having some medical problems like epilepsy so with this we come to the end of the video here we learnt about a general introduction about the rpds the types the indications and contraindications in the next video we will be studying about the parts of rpd and many more things if you found the video helpful don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to show support also you can visit our website and subscribe to our premium tutorials where we cover the entire syllabus via video lectures like this one so till we meet next time take very good care of yourself take care allah hafiz